Hi everyone and welcome to the evening service. My name's Matt. I'm Maddie um, and we're really happy to have you with us this evening. I realize um, we've been in lockdown 2.0 for a few days now. Um, so wherever you are, we hope that you are staying sane, staying safe and um, yeah, generally keeping well. <laughs> Yeah, we hope you've not killed anyone in your family quite yet. Um, we have got a really good service lined up this evening. Yeah. So um, we're doing things ever so slightly differently. Uh, we have got two really great songs from Abby and a fantastic uh, talk from Joy Steele. So another yeah. debut preach uh, this evening. It's a really good one. Um, you're not going to hear from us in the middle. There's no interview. The talk is so good, we decided it didn't even need an interview. <laughs> we're just going to have all Joy this evening. So she's wrapping up our series on fake friends. Yeah. It's our third and final one, um, talking about self-pity. So uh, not just about self-pity, but how we can kind of look to God and have his view of you know who we are and what we're like in his eyes so that we can live uh, yeah in that love and in that acceptance so really looking forward to that um Matt, do you want to pray for us before we get yeah, started sure uh, god we just thank you that we can come and be together this evening online um i pray for everyone that's joining us wherever they are god um, and however this week has unfolded for them that you would be near to them that for those who maybe are struggling in lockdown, even after just a few days, God, um, that you would really um, shower them in your love this evening. That, um, yeah, the, the words Joy is about to speak to us would really hit home, um, that we'd be able to take it and apply it to our lives, even in lockdown. Um, and you would just be near to us this evening. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to sing The Lord's My Shepherd. This is a really classic song and it's based on Psalm 23. Um, I really like this song because for me it's just a nice calm reminder that God is always with you and that line about him restoring your soul and when I'm not sure what's going on I can always come back to this song and it just uplifts me and makes me feel a little bit safe and happy so yeah
So good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Joy, and some of you might not know who I am. Um, but uh, first thing is, I absolutely love Jesus. Um, I'm a doctor, and I'm a mum, and I struggle with anxiety and low mood, and have often end up ended up in a bit of a spiral of self pity. So. Today, I'm going to unpack that a little bit. We're going to look at the Bible, see what the Bible says. And I've got a few kind of pointers from some of the stuff that God's been teaching me really recently. I've been doing a study with a friend, which is from Bible Basics, and that's on the version Bible app. So there's an anxiety part one and part two, and I've actually found it really helpful. It's a podcast. If you find it a bit intense, it doesn't take very long. I have a really low attention span, so that was quite helpful. Um, so... Um, my name is Joy, and the reason that I was called Joy is because I was in my family what's called a wee late one, which my father announced on my wedding day. That basically means that I was kind of a bit of an accident. Um, but they called me Joy because they were really joyful to have another child, and they had three boys, and then they had me. I was a girl. Um, but actually, as I sort of grew up, I felt a bit of pressure about that name. I was like, oh, called Joy, I must be joyful, I must be happy. And I remember being probably about 11 or 12, and I really clearly remember a girl at school being pretty mean to me and saying, oh, I don't know why you're called Joy. You're not even happy. I thought you were a Christian. And I remember it hitting me like, got straight in the chest, and I thought, oh, yeah, I am, isn't that, isn't that, isn't that what we see? Isn't that what I'm supposed to be? I'm supposed to be really happy. So this is the biggest thing that I kind of want to bring out is that actually all of our emotions are God-given. All of them are important. And actually we see it in the Bible all the time. So you think about Jonah. So Jonah, you might know a little bit about, was a prophet, didn't want to do what God told him to do. He ran away and he ended up in the belly of a fish. And his prayer to God in the belly of the fish is filled with emotion. And he then comes back and he does what God tells him. But then the brilliant thing about Jonah is that he then goes on to be pretty angry with God after he goes and does what God tells him to do. And all of that is documented so clearly in the Bible. You think about David. Um, so David in Psalm 139, which Matt talked about a couple of weeks ago, talks about how loved we are, how God knows us intricately. Um, he knew us before when we were in our mother's room. But then he goes on to say, but do you know what, God? I really hate these people. These people that are disobeying your word. Oh, I just wish that you would just get rid of them for me. And he goes on and on and on about his real dislike of this group of people. And that's all there in scripture. And then we look at Elijah. So Elijah had a pretty good reason to be feeling sorry for himself. There was this queen called Jezebel. She was going to kill him. And what he did was he ran away and he hid under this tree. And he's like, oh, God, would you just take me to heaven now? Because this world is just too much for me. This woman's going to kill me. I'm, I'm at the end of my tether. And they come and they tell God about it. So the thing that I just want to highlight there is that it's always OK to feel the way that we feel. But the important thing is, is what we do with that emotion. So I've kind of got three points that I want to bring out. So the very first one and the most important one is be with God in your emotion. So when I was probably about 25, 25, something like that, um, I really fancied this fella. And I was like, oh, gosh, God, this would be perfect. You know, this guy loves Jesus. I love Jesus. He wants to do these things with his life. I want to do these things with my life. We're really good friends. This would be a really great fit. And I'd liked him for a really long time. Nothing was happening and I was praying about it. And I remember going for a run and I remember lying on the meadows in Edinburgh. If anybody knows Edinburgh, it's like, it's like the downs basically. And it was absolutely chucking it down. And I remember just lying on the ground and just crying about this and being so gutted that this wasn't going the way that I wanted it to go. And do you know what? God really cared about that. It didn't magically make me feel better about it. I still really fancied this fella. And actually, it never, ever happened. And I'm on the other end of that story. And I can see that actually, that wasn't the best thing for me. And actually, this fella was just a great friend. And that was fine. But being with God in my emotion was so important. And we see that in the Bible as well. Because what God does 
when we spend time with him, when we talk to him and we tell him about our emotions. Number one, you've recognized God cares about you. So he really, really cares about your bad day. And that's really important for everybody to know. And the thing to remember is that nothing, nothing in the world is ever too big for God. So you might be thinking, oh gosh, God, like I've done this really horrible thing and I've really let my friend down and they don't actually know that I've done that yet and I feel really guilty about it. But do you know what? Nothing is too big for God. God can forgive anything and he wants to know how you're feeling and he wants to be able to help you to work through that emotion. Just remember that David was a murderer, Noah was a drunk. You know, there are so many examples in scripture of us messing up and we do mess up. I mess up, we will mess up, but God loves us and he wants us to come to him and tell him about it. So the second thing is nothing's too little for him. So, you know, even stupid stuff like I've got a really bad haircut and actually that's making me feel really bad about myself or, you know, I don't like the size that I am or I don't like the clothes that I wear or um, actually I'm now in this like, you know, university course that I don't want to be in and I don't want to tell anybody about it. Like God cares about stuff that isn't massive as well. Um, and it's important to come to him first rather than going to other places looking for a kind of you know, a way to feel better because actually God's going to help us to deal with those emotions. And one of the, <laughs> so my old pastor always used to have this thing that he said, and he used to say that God loves you because he loves you, because he loves you, because he loves you. And actually there's nothing that you're going to do to make God love you more. And there's absolutely nothing that you can do to make God love you less because he loves you so much and he wants to be with you in the hurt and the hard and the joy and the sadness and the grittiness and the loneliness of life. And he just wants you to talk to him about it. And the thing about it is when you talk to God about it, God's gonna do something. So it, it might not be the instant solution that you're after. But when we look at those stories of Jonah, so Jonah was pretty raging at God about saving these people in Nineveh. And he's like, oh God, I can't believe you saved them. Like, what have you done? And actually what Jonah needed to learn there was a lesson that God is gracious and God is forgiving. So God taught him that lesson. And that's a really beautiful thing. And we look at David and we see him saying, God, would you just like destroy these people that really hate you? And oh, I hate them and they're ruining my life. Would you just come and just sort it out? And actually, the last verse that he ends with is he asks God to search him and to know him and to change his heart and see if there'd be any wicked way in him. And actually, what, God, what David needed was a humble heart, and that was what God gave him. And then we think about Elijah. And so Elijah's there. He's like, oh, this queen's going to kill me. Like, you know, I just I want out of it. I just want to go. And actually, what God does is he sends food and he sends nourishment and he just like, just does this lovely thing. Like I once heard a sermon on that story and I said, uh, so if you're sitting in the desert under a tree and you're asking God just to take you to heaven, God wants to make you a cake. That's what he does. And he just blesses him. And then Elijah is filled up and he's ready to go and do what he needs to do. And that's like a really beautiful thing. So first thing, be with God. Second thing is be in community. So the thing that I've found in my own life when I'm feeling anxious and depressed and low is that sometimes those feelings, which are or sometimes seen as negative things, but they aren't always, but they can spiral into self-pity and they can spiral into your own little echo chamber. And if you're feeling these things and you're alone in it and you're not talking to God about it, and you're isolated from your community, it makes things worse. So I would encourage you to be in community. I had some counselling last year um, after I was pretty depressed and anxious. And oh, she was like, she was amazing. And I would say things to her about the fact that, you know, oh, I really wanted, you know, I really wanted like this person to do this thing. And she just turned to me one day and she said, well, did you, did you ever actually ask them to do that? And I hadn't, I had never done it because I just wanted people to magically read my mind and be there for me. And sometimes people are great at doing that. Like 
there are sometimes people just nail it on the head, but actually sometimes people don't nail it on the head. And it's not because they're rubbish people or it's not because they don't like you or they don't care. It's maybe because they don't know. And it's always okay to ask for help, but being in community and having somebody that can tell you that is important. Another thing that I really remember is being on a beach with Callum and he was screaming his head off and I was just getting more and more anxious and more and more uptight and thinking I can't get him to stop crying like this is the worst feeling in the world. And my friend came and she took him off me and she walked down the beach. Now that was the kindest thing that anybody could have done to me in that moment. Like I didn't want somebody to be like, oh, you're doing such a great job, blah, blah, blah. Like what I needed was somebody just to take him and to go off down the beach. Now, the reason that she could do that is because she knew me. I trusted her and that was a really you know, good thing and such a blessing for her to do. And then there's friends who will tell you when you're getting it wrong, <laughs> because sometimes when we're in that place where we're feeling really bad and it feels like nobody's getting it, nobody's helping, you know, why is nobody noticing that I'm really sad or why can't they help? But it makes us more and more about self. And then what happens is when we're hurt, we lash out and we hurt others. And sometimes in community, you need someone to say, the way that you're treating that person, that's not actually who God wants you to be. And having someone who you trust and you know is just saying that because they love you is so important. So the other thing that I just want to say about community is that sometimes community can let you down. So the biggest thing is that we're all human. Um, so you will mess up and people will mess up. Um, but, you know, I just think that don't let that define you. Don't let, don't let yourself be defined by this one situation that happens in community and you just think, I'm out of here. They don't know me. Um, you know, nobody cares. I'm just going to walk away from it. Because actually, it just might not be that. And telling people about it's really important. So if that's you and you're sitting at home and you're like, oh, my home group have really let me down or church has really let me down or my family have really let me down, I just want to say that I'm really sorry. And if that happens, then please come and tell someone. Come and tell somebody that you trust in church. Tell your family. Get it out in the open and talk about it because God can heal any relationship, and he does, and there's always hope in that. But becoming more and more isolated always just makes things worse. And just remember that we all have capacity for different things at different times in our life, but community is a two-way process. And even if you're in that place where you're like, I don't have the energy to even, I don't know, make dinner or talk or reply to that text. It's just too intense for me to reply to that text or whatever, whatever it is, you know, I would just encourage you to think about looking out a little bit. So if you can't, you know, get involved in those texts that are bombarding you and it's overwhelming you, maybe write a letter, you know, maybe there's somebody that you've been thinking about and you're like, I haven't seen them in ages, send something in the post, send some chocolate, just be kind to people, ask them how they are and try and, you know, get involved in community and make it a two-way process, but always know that sometimes you don't have capacity to do what you once could. And actually, maybe if you were that person that was serving all the time and now you've actually just, you're just overwhelmed with life, that's okay too. But there might be something that you can do just a little bit to make you feel part of that community um, and, and kind of be in community and benefit from it. So those two things, be with God, be in community, and the very last thing is just about being kind to yourself. So in Galatians 5 verse 1, Jesus says, or not Jesus, is it Jesus? Maybe it's Paul. Don't know. I think it is Paul. It's Paul, isn't it? But he says it's for, it's for freedom that Christ has set you free. Oh yeah, Christ in it. It's definitely Paul. But yeah, so it's for freedom that Christ has set you free. So the thing about that is when we mess up, which you will, don't dwell on it. Don't be like living in that like unforgiving place. If people have, have done something against you, don't live in that unforgiving place because unforgiveness is like, oh, it's like the worst thing. It just makes everything awful. 
And, you know, Paul says there that it's for freedom that Christ set you free. So if you, if you know God, if you love Jesus, don't be living shackled something that has never been dealt with. Deal with it and, and live in that freedom because God forgave you and his grace is so vast and so wide that it's enough for you to forgive yourself and it's enough for you to forgive other people. So that's just where I'm going to end. So the, the sort of four things that I talked about where all emotions are important and valid, but what you do with them does make a difference. Number one, go to God first and be with him in whatever emotion you're feeling. Number two, be a part of a community that you trust and um, engage with it. Go for it both ways. And number three, forgive yourself and forgive other people. So I'm just going to read out um, a sort of encouragement from Philippians. So this is Philippians 4, verse 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. <laughs> I love this. You're like, nah, not today. But it, this is what it says. Rejoice in the Lord always. And then he just says it again. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. And then he goes on to say, do not be anxious about anything. But the thing that I love about this group of verses is that it doesn't end there. It's not like a command. Do be anxious about anything. Oh, good luck with that. He then says, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So don't be anxious about anything. I'm just going to pray for us now, actually. So God, to help us not to be anxious about stuff. Help us to come to you and to remember the good things that you've done for us, to write them down, to remember them. And then we pray, God, that you would take our anxieties and our worries and uh, give us your peace, which passes all understanding. Amen. So this first song is called Desert Song and it's a really nice reminder of the fact that even when things are hopeless and they seem really hard and you're really struggling, God is still with you and he's going to give you the strength to tackle and get through whatever you're facing.
Thank you so much, Joy, and the worship team. That's just been a really good service. Um, yeah, so Matt, we've got some questions now, don't we? We do, we do. Um, before we get to that point, um, an apology for the way that I filmed the, the worship tracks. Um, I was without my helper, Sam Kill, who has been doing an amazing job of editing. Um, so this is a shout out to Sam for helping, uh, and also a demonstration that when I'm left to my own devices, I'm just a bit rubbish sometimes with a camera, so sorry about that. Um, but yes, Abby did a great job leading, so thanks very much. Yeah, we've got a few questions, as always, yeah. to get going. So question number one is this. Joy uh, mentioned her name and the fact that her parents called her that. So our question is, did you ever have or do you still have a nickname growing up? Ooh. Now, I had one growing up because unsurprisingly, there were growing up, there were as many mats as there are currently around at yeah. Community Church. There's loads of us. Um, so teachers had to come up with a way to differentiate between the mats. Okay. So uh, there was uh, Matt, Matty, Matthew. Uh, there were two Matt D's. So on the board, she would write Matt D, and then I was Matt D, and then the second letter of my last name was O, so D-O, and that was my nickname, was D-O. So literally, people would call me that for the longest time. And every now and again, if I bump into a friend from school, they will say, hey, D-O, how's it going? Yeah. Sounds a lot like B-O, and so I was bullied for that. But um, yeah, nicknames can be a blessing and a curse. Do you ever have a nickname? <laughs> Hopefully it was kinder than that one. <laughs> um, mostly just Maddie. Um, my dad's. Oh, that is not. My, now. my dad calls me Mads or Mad. Mad yeah. Um, yeah. No. I've, That's just so much more reasonable I, than I, mine. Yeah. I mean, I've had some funny ones. They haven't really stuck. Ah, fair they enough. last for a week and then people get over them. Ah, but th thankfully. Yeah. No. Much better than accidentally being called Bo. Uh, right. We've we got another question. Yeah. Question two is. Um, Top tips for staying connected and mm. staying in community with people, especially during lockdown. Mm. Now this one, um, I think I'm possibly a little bit of an expert at Ooh. it, only because um, I live quite far away from my family. Mm. Um, and Shout out to Lynette and Rick if you're watching, by the way. <laughs> hi mom, hi dad. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know, for the last 10 years have lived away from my close friends and family back home. Mm. And so I've, made it a point to stay mm. connected to them so nice. being in lockdown uh i am still able to keep that connection up with them and then i also put that out um towards the people that i'm not seeing here in england and how do you do that um yeah so there are a few ways so <laughs> uh whatsapp i uh yeah i'm not a huge fan of mass group messages but like a nice individual chat with my mom is always really nice yeah great um especially because that means i can call her for free yeah, true. yeah so, so whatsapp calling more than whatsapp messaging yeah, yeah. Nice. um mail oh yes. old school old school love nice. mail uh love to send things back home yeah, uh send things mm. to friends uh i found an old postcard from a trip to hawaii and sent that to a friend that had so gone cool. on that trip with me over 12 years ago yeah just little things yeah, like that it. um sending people memes is quite fun <laughs> and just <laughs> yeah but um, lots of phone calls, lots of um, messaging and emails and photos. Nice one. Yeah. yeah. So share with us some of your top tips for how you uh, plan to stay connected. Joy talked about the importance of being in community and how that's a really helpful way of having a good view of yourself. So how are you planning to do that over lockdown? Really good question. Final question um, actually comes with a little bit of homework as well. Question three is, what is one thing that God has recently said about you? Now, that's a bit of a bizarre question. The reason we're asking this is because it implies that you're going to do some homework. So you can't really answer this question unless you've done the thing we're about to ask you to do. Yeah. So what we want you to do is either this evening, um, we'll pray a little bit later and we'll yeah. do that, either this evening or at some point soon, as soon as possible, ideally, we want you to take some time to pray and to ask God to speak something into your life, either whether that's about your character about your future, about who you are, something about your situation. We want you to actively seek God's voice for you and for your life. And it might be that you do this with a friend. It might be that you ask your friends to pray for you. It might be that you read the Bible and ask God to speak to you through that. But we want you to ask God to say something into your life. Uh, you don't need to share that with us. You might want to share it with a friend or a family member, but we would love for you to do that uh, as a bit of homework. Uh, yeah, based on what Joy has said, moving forward. Yeah, so that brings us to the end of our series on fake friends. 
Um, I don't know about you, but I've personally really, really enjoyed the last two series from Dead Reckoning to Fake Friends. Um, and now we find ourselves in this really, um, I guess not strange anymore because we've done it <laughs> once before, but this uh, situation of lockdown number two mm. or the sequel, as I'm calling it, um, <laughs> just rolling with it. Uh, but yeah, it's brought about some challenges, uh, as I'm sure it has for everyone. Um, in which we've prayerfully considered how to move forward as a church and as a whole. Hmm. And one of the things is we will be pausing the evening service. So we're, we're not ending, we're not stopping. You will see us again. Hmm. Uh, but we promise, we, yeah. we promise. But uh, we are going to step back from producing the evening service so that we as a church can focus on our morning service. Uh, so you'll see us there. Mm -hmm. um, you won't see the snazzy lighting though, because it will be in the day. That's reserved specifically <laughs> for the evening service. The vibey lights, that's, yeah. that's staying here. Um, but uh, yeah, so we really hope that you join us in the morning. Uh, you can also watch it in the evening. So you could just watch the morning service in the evening. But, that's such a good point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't thought about that. But um, yeah, we're going to take a step back from this evening service, pause it for a little while focus on being family and community all together on the morning service, yeah. which we're looking forward to. Yep. And that brings us up to the final thing we're going to say before we uh, wrap the service up um, temporarily and we put it on pause for a little bit, which is that we would love to encourage you uh, during lockdown to stay in touch. Yeah. Now, we're aware that we're pausing the evening service just temporarily so that we can support the morning and make sure it's really, really good and a great resource. But as we do that, you know, we started to pop up last week and that was really, really fun. Um, we had a great time together and what we don't want to do is for the evening service to get paused and then for us to kind of fall out of, of you know touch with each other so please make sure that you keep a look on the website for upcoming events and groups that you can join make sure you're watching the morning service sign in leave a comment say hello so that we know that you're there and please join a group if you're not part of a small group already make sure that you you know get in touch with us we'd love to get you involved in one meeting on zoom you can leave your camera off and stay in your pjs if you want um, they're really great and a, a, an amazing support during lockdown. Also, if I'm correct, at the time of speaking, we're allowed to meet one on one. So make sure that you do that. Find some close friends who can encourage you in your faith and say positive things to you during lockdown and make sure you make a, a deal of meeting up one to one. So you stay in touch with Outside people. Outside at two meters. Correct. Definitely. Stick to the rules, guys. The yeah, for yeah. sure. Anyway, let's wrap this up uh, by saying a prayer together. God, we want to thank you for the evening service. We thank you for uh, tonight and for the opportunity that we've had to hear from your word, to worship uh, and to be encouraged by being together online. Mm -hmm. God, we thank you for Joy's encouragement to us. And Lord, we pray uh, that as we take time over the next few days to hear from you, God, help us to hear your voice. Help us to be encouraged by you and to stay close to you. Help us to remember those encouragements from, from Joy uh, to come to you, to be in community and to be kind to ourselves and to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, that's a goodbye from us. Yeah. And, no, it's uh, not goodbye. It's see you later. No, that's right. It's see you later. We are pausing um, and we're going to get ready. We're going to get into our comfy clothes. Let's do lockdown and let's embrace it with all of its struggles and all of its joys. Um, yeah, let's do this. Let's do it. Just a goodbye. Yeah, straight into the goodbye. Ah. <laughs> Moment of silence. <laughs> um, this evening's service. It's been really, really lovely to have you with us and to hear. Uh, I don't. I don't. <laughs> totally forgot what I was doing on the second chorus. And just like, oh, <laughs> Recording on that camera. No. Boom. Uh, yes. Good job, guys. Yeah, I think your laptop's gonna explode. <laughs> um, that's fine. <laughs> we both did it. We were both on the same one, but then because I was laughing at you, I missed the chords. Okay, Pray. So we're all good. We're all done. Sweet. See ya. See ya. 
See ya.